right. Test, 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 test. All right. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first installment of the 40 West Wrestling Show. I am your host, Tyreek Nolan, heavyweight coach at Farham College. For the first episode, I am joined <clears throat> today by the head coach, Logan Meister, yep. and the assistant coach, Jared Costin. So, um, just a little background on me, you know, I came from a local school, Magna Vista, uh, came to Farham just trying to find somewhere to go. You know, obviously. So that's Martinsville, right? It's pretty close. Yeah. So, I mean, I may be from Farham, maybe 45 minutes away, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, just a little bit of information on me or background information on me. I came from a school, you know, it wasn't necessarily like a huge thing, you know, wrestling obviously wasn't like a, a huge it thing. Wasn't the, like, exactly, the yeah. Priority. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. When I came here, it was kind of just like what I envisioned in my mind of, you know, the whole team, you know, standard, what a wrestling team should feel like. Yeah. I got that when I came here. So, you know, that's just kind of like uh, what, what helped me out, what uh, helped me get started in. You know, obviously, here we are today, so. Yeah, it's nice when you get surrounded with a, a group that kind of has a similar mindset, similar um, just, like, priorities as far as wrestling. You know, they really take it seriously. And it's hard to do that yourself when everybody else around you isn't taking it seriously. They don't really care that much if they win or lose, and they're not as invested. So right. that was probably nice to get into a different environment. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it was definitely like a, a huge change, I would definitely say, as far as environment, um, wrestling environment. Obviously, you know, Martinsville isn't that different from there. You know, you're kind of still in the sticks, whatever you got. If it's a Dollar General or a Dairy Queen, you kind of just got to, you know, go with that. And, and they do. And right, yep. Just be happy with what it is that you got. Be yeah. happy that you have some type of source of, all right, I got food. Yeah. I can go get a towel in the middle of the night if I need to, you yeah. know, just whatever. But, um, yeah, so uh, as far as, you know, you're concerned, obviously, you came from Maryland. Yep. A lot more opportunity. Yeah, as far as wrestling, yeah, like, the youth wrestling in Maryland was a big deal. There's, you know, right. this whole tournament system set up with the regionals or their, their leagues and then the junior league state tournament. Yeah. Um, yes, they make it kind of a big deal, so it gets a lot of people involved. And so I was fortunate; my dad was a coach. So my dad wrestled in high school uh, for Laurel High School in Maryland. So a family affair, actually. So my my dad wrestled, my uncles wrestled, uh, great uncles wrestled. So you would say you were born into the sport. I was born. In, I like to think that I had a choice. <laughs> but I don't know, you know, even when I was, you know, I was like two, three, my dad was bringing me to practice while he was coaching, just holding me. Um, he said I used to start off just playing dodgeball, which is probably, it's probably not surprising for people to hear because I love playing dodgeball. Well, I mean, on, shoot. On the dodgeball here, guy. You yes. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but, um, that's how I started off going to practice. I just played games and then, you know, my dad just kind of let me hop in when I wanted to. And so what was it? Because obviously, you know, you see a lot of kids who, if their parents try to, you know, not necessarily force them into a sport, but try to like really push it on them to be around. Like obviously your dad had you around wrestling practices and yeah. obviously it probably would have been a choice. Would have definitely been a choice for you. Um, you see a lot of kids who are, you know, they, they're having to live in their, what their parents want them to be. You know, what was it that separated that as far as y'all's relationship? Uh, you see that a lot too and it's sad. I've seen that happen to some of my friends too. Same. Um, <laughs> just like being around the sport for so long. I'm sure Jared's seen this too. Just like the dads will get so in, like too involved and like they want to win so bad. It's yeah, you know, And it probably comes from a good place. Just yeah. like, oh, no, yeah. you know, knowing parents, you know, they just want to see their kid do really well. But uh, I think my dad did a good job of just kind of stepping back and uh, he stepped out of that coach's role at one point. We uh, wrestled for him at the Boys and Girls Club team for, I think, four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, and then he decided, you know, I need to put you in a, a tougher program that's going to make you get better. And it was a chance for him to step back in more of the, the dad role. So less of a coach and more of a dad. And I think that helped that relationship. So he was 
just kind of there for support instead yeah. of always, you know, it's hard to have your dad just get on you all the time about wrestling stuff. And then you go home and, you know, coaches at, at home, right, you yeah. know, watching you eat dinner. Like, yeah, what do you want, what do you want to eat? Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just go to and out in the tournament, but I still got to feed you. Yeah. <laughs> and those, uh, those car ride homes, mm -hmm. I remember those after a tournament, you know, if you did really bad, I'm just like, oh, yeah. man, we got to sit in the car for like two hours with, yeah. oh, man. I'm being completely honest with you. I mean, I've definitely seen people like that. I've seen people who just, like, they didn't want to, like, come back to practice just yeah. because they knew it was just going to be, like, right. you know, they weren't going to mentally be in it, you know? Yeah. But uh, what was it that necessarily led you to fair? So, I started my college search senior year. I was looking around at a bunch of different schools. I knew I wanted to wrestle. I made that decision. I was like, man, I really want to wrestle in, in college. And, um, my high school coach, she helped me pick a list of schools we put together to uh, try and find something that fit for me. Uh, there's a bunch of schools on that list. I mean, Kutztown, George Mason, oh, yeah. um, Washington Lee was on that list. Yeah. A bunch of schools, Maryland. Um, so you, I, were, you were a prospect, right? At, I mean, uh, you know, eh. Yeah. I, I thought I thought I you know I thought I was. Well, I think that's be, plenty of wrestlers. Yeah, you, know? you got to think that's with any sport. You know, yeah. everybody thinks they're the guy until it's like, oh, you know, these <laughs> these other guys do this sport too. Right. You know? Like, and we had a, I was fortunate to be on a really good high school team. You had some some uh, nationally ranked guys on our team, and they were getting hit up by some big big Division One schools: Ohio State, Penn State, Maryland, uh, Chapel Hill, yeah. UVA, uh, Tech. And so seeing those guys getting a lot of attention from Division One schools, my you know, I was kind of like, right, maybe I should be, a, yeah, maybe I should be a Division One guy. And I reached out, and you know, didn't get much love back, mm -hmm. and it hurt my feet, it hurt my feelings a little bit. So, uh, and you know, it's just hard to go to a place where you don't feel like the coach is connecting with you. And you're like, hey, you're like, oh, I want to wrestle. Like, hey, I want to. I felt like I was bothering them, like just like yeah. poking, hey, mm -hmm. like. Look at me, you know, yeah, I want right. to wrestle for you. Oh, yeah. Um, so then, at one point, I don't remember exactly the timeline. At one point, Gary had been up at my high school, Gary Holden, the assistant athletic director here, and let my high school know that we were starting. He had talked to my coach at some point and let him know we were starting a program at Ferrum. And my coach uh, brought up Ferrum's, like, hey, what about this place? They're starting up a wrestling program. Check it out, check out the coach. And that was Nate Yetzer at the time. Um, so I just I googled him. So there wasn't really anything to go off of, of the program because right, yeah. we were new. Um, you know, he had he was a Division One All American, had Division One coaching experience. Uh, watched some of his like technique videos or something I saw on YouTube. Uh, so I filled out their recruiting form, and then he reached out to me, talked it up, talked about his vision, his plan for the program, and you know he sounded kind of crazy. But I liked it. You know he was I want to have national champs. You know this is a great opportunity to be the first. All American, first national qualifier, first national champ, that sort of stuff, and um, I believed them. I was like, oh, yeah, we you know, we could do it down here. Let's let's do it. And well, so, that's the good thing about Yeah, it is like I mean that man can sell water to a fish. Yeah. I mean <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> he will talk your head off. But I mean at the end of the day, he knows what he's talking about and he's good at what he does. Yeah, and he wasn't you know when he pitched the uh, you know it's a great place to train and focus on your schoolwork. He wasn't mm -hmm. lying. It's a great yeah. place oh, for yeah. it. We got. All the resources, the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got all the resources you need. And, uh, I remember walking on campus. I think it was like President's Day weekend, so it wasn't like students were home on right. like Easter break or something. Um, he showed me around, and just the views were awesome. Yeah, I, I like the mountains. Mm -hmm. We always vacationed up in West Virginia, ride four wheelers and stuff. So just seeing the scenery was great, and yeah. met a lot of the people on campus, Gary and uh, Tom Steele just big wrestling fans, mm -hmm. and it, it felt important yeah. here, which was nice, and even at the start, it was like, you know, we're gonna start this thing, we're gonna do it full force. We, they gave us our own building on campus. Like, right. how many places do you see that? Oh, yeah, that's, and not even that, but it wasn't like a false promise. Right. You know, he was committed to exactly what it was that he said. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, going back to when I said, like, you know, you just being from Maryland, I'm pretty sure that was a huge culture shock, but just like coming down here, I'm pretty sure you were given that confidence to where like, hey, you know, mom and dad, I'm good where I am. Yeah. You know, this is where I'm gonna make my start and go on from there. Yeah, you know you got a big group of people there to 
support yeah. you and get you what you need and, and help oh, yeah. you out. But um, okay, so on from uh, your entrance in the Ferrum, new guy on campus, Jared Costa, new assistant coach at Ferrum College. Uh, what led you here? Um, so for the past three years, I've been assistant coach at Capstone University in Vermont, mm -hmm. and um, I started out as a GA there. Well, I started out wrestling there for two years, finished out. Um, we we're actually a first year program, kind of like the Logan experience. That's his wrestling, and then I transitioned to a coaching role. Mm -hmm. um, so for the last couple of years, I've been more of like a volunteer role, and I was looking for something more full time where I can you know make that money and right. you know pay the bills and. Looking around, looking around, and finally got a, got a call from Logan, and he sold me his ideas and his vision for the program, and uh, invited me down here for a visit, and I just kind of like fell in love with the school right away, kind of met the ideology of Logan, and kind of like matched what I wanted, and then, you know, fortunate enough for him to offer me a position. It was kind of like a no-brainer for me. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where you know it's right, right off the beginning. Right. It wasn't even a thought. It was just that's where I need to be, and yeah, you know, just kind of ended up perfect, perfect scenario for me. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, I mean, to have a head coach and an assistant coach that's just so in tune with each other, it's not rare. But when you do find it, it's, I mean, it's an amazing thing. It helps. You know, that helps a lot. It helps a lot. It. It lets you know that it's not that much of the program that's not being taken care of. Yeah. You know, it's you see a lot of head coaches who, you know, they'll bring these guys on and it's like, okay, yeah, he came from this place, but you know, he's kind of just here for this main reason, you know. Right, yeah, exactly. Which and I mean, especially in southeast southwest Virginia, wherever, you know, we are. You know, I'm not good at geography. But anyway, so um I mean just given down here in the south, you know, yeah. it's Hard to find, especially for D three schools, a uh, head coach and an assistant coach that they both in, intertwine with the same ideas. You know, it's like okay, not button, not button heads. Right, exactly. We know what it is that we're getting after. We know what it is that we want. So, you know, let's go ahead and get out, get after it. You know. Yeah, we haven't gotten to spend a, a ton of time together. We've just moved in a couple of weeks, but we've gotten to hang out some outside of work and just building that relationship and. It's easier when you're friends. I mean, we're already friends. We went to school yeah, together. Exactly. And it just makes it so much easier to come to work and work with each other. And, yeah. Um, it's also easier to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. If that makes sense. Right. Like, I don't want to let my friends down. You exactly. don't want to let this guy You know, down. it's like, okay, aside from wrestling, I know I'm still going to want to talk to you. Right. You know, yeah, so, like, hey, can we, can we hang out? I know I suck, but. <laughs> like, <laughs> you do your work. What the heck? You want right. to come hang out with me? So, um, as far as the season goes, what is your vision? And I can honestly like ask this as just like a, you know, both of y'all coming together, you know, for like, yeah, you know, yeah. say if anybody else was to ask, you know, what was y'all's plan going into the season? What would y'all, what are y'all looking forward to, you know, going into the season? Yeah, so my vision, I mean, I want to keep, we, we've made a name for ourselves here. Right. You know, right. We came from nothing my freshman year, you know, we were, that was our first year as a program. We worked our way up to national or regional champs in a short amount of time. Yep. Uh, we've made a few top 25 appearances, so my goal is to continue to have that level of success and then push those boundaries a little bit further. You know, we've been known in this area for having a strong wrestling program. I don't want that to change at all. Oh yeah. Um, I want guys to enjoy their time here. I want them to enjoy this experience because no matter where you do it, College wrestling is going to be hard, whether yeah. it's at Ferrum, Castleton, you know, yeah. oh yeah, anywhere, anywhere you go, it's going to be tough. So it's that next level. That's right. all it is, right? Yeah. And I want to push them to succeed, and and uh, you know, a big thing we're going to focus on this year is balance, mm -hmm. uh, being able to balance your athletic career, your academic career, and then your social life. Um, I think it's important to have all three. You know, obviously. The social life can't affect your academic and your athletic careers negatively, um, then that's going too far. But you definitely you have to have some sort of social life. You have to be able to bond with your friends and have relationships outside of the team on campus. Right. Uh, get involved in other things as well, and just creating that family feel within the entire community instead of just our wrestling family. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can honestly say just. You know, for myself, 
I had my social life aside from wrestling that was on campus. Yeah. So it made me want to already be here. Yeah. You know? But I mean, the stuff that we would do, just team bonding, just different stuff, everybody being even just in a simple group chat, just feeling included. Yeah. You know, it's it's we like, still do that. Yeah, so exactly. Have our you know, so it's just chat. like, yeah, we got the alumni group chat and I mean I'm sorry, Jerry, you know, you can't be a part of all the fun, yeah. but <laughs> it's all right. But still it's just like little stuff like that, okay, I've built you know, this bond and this relationship with these guys and okay, <clears throat> I feel like in an, in another case, you see uh, the top teams, you know, let's uh, talk D1, you know, Penn State, Ohio State, all these teams who, it's not even their force to be around each other, they want to be around each other, right. they love the culture and then that corresponds or that correlates to their wrestling yeah. because it makes them go out there and yeah, they're wrestling for themselves and they know that, you know, they're going to go out there and give it all that they got. Right. But you're also fighting for a bigger purpose, yeah. which is this team and you know these guys who you know have your back, you know that they are down for you, you do whatever, and it's just over time the relationship that you've built, yeah. you know, which is why I'd say, um, and Jerry, I'll you know go back to you as far as like what you you know envision as far as you know where the team should go, but even with the heavyweights. I build a personal relationship with them. Obviously, they know I'm kind of centered around them. Yeah. You know, not just the heavyweights. You know, obviously, Braden, 197 with the 184s yeah. here and there. Yeah, but that's your, you know, that's your niche. That's your right. role. You and that's my bread and butter. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of just like I know what it is that I expect, and they know what it is that I expect. But at the same time, it's not just this dictator type of role. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, okay... I'm going to allow you to do whatever you want, just when you come into practice, know you're going to have a partner who's ready for you to be 100%. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're feeling 40%, 50%, whatever. That was on you. Exactly. You come in ready because <clears throat> yep. you going to beat you up. <laughs> went out last weekend. If you stayed up all night, if you missed an assignment and you had to like cram it in you know, before you came to practice and right. now you're mentally trying to you know, process everything, that's on you. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to be there as that, you know, all right, well, shoot, if I can help, you know, let me be there for this. Because I'm still expecting you to be there right. fully when it's time for both of us to really be together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that, I mean, over the years at FAM, it, everybody was kind of forced into doing that. You know, it was kind of just like. You see more people stick towards their practice partners and you know stuff like that. All right, let's hold this person accountable. We know what he's capable of. I know that I'm going to be with him in practice. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I need him here. Right. So I'm going to be in his corner. Yeah. And I feel like making that social life, making that, I guess you know, school, you know, making school correlate with wrestling. Yeah. It it goes into that social life. You know, you you got to be vocal. You got to be you know able to talk to your people, talk to your friends, talk to your teammates, stuff like that. And I feel like we've definitely built that bond as a team. Yeah, already as it is. I think we've got a really strong team bond already, and I want to extend that just to other parts of the campus. And that's how we're going to get more people involved. You know, we want to fill up that sports gym when we have matches. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the things that we're doing. To help with that is uh, Coach Cleve Adams, new football coach here. He's doing a great job of trying to create a, a big game day experience. Mm -hmm. And he went to school here, Tyreek, you know, there wasn't much of a, you know, if there's a football oh, game on campus, it'd be like, yeah. we would have to just be at the field. And be yeah. like, oh, hey, like, <laughs> be walking guys, by Bassett Field and saying, hey, what's right. all those people sitting in the stands yeah. for? <laughs> so I'm excited that he's going to bring this, uh, this game day experience, and we participated in a trial run on Friday, the tailgate alley, which I thought it went pretty well, especially we only had freshmen on campus. Yeah, so I wish I could have been with y'all. Smaller, smaller, uh, yeah, you're working. A couple yeah. hundred people turned out for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it, it was a lot of fans. People were active, walking mm -hmm. around, talking, playing games, and um, just giving us something to do. We can, yeah. That gives us something to get involved in as a team. So we've committed to have a tailgate at the tailgate alley for all the home football games. Right. Yeah. We're going to be allowed and support those guys, go to their games, and that way we get that football team to come to our matches. They, you know, we're going to try and match it up other sports too, volleyball, soccer, yeah. baseball, lacrosse. You know, we want to get out there and, and basketball and, and watch all these teams play. And yeah, it definitely makes you, and I feel like it's also just being on campus. You know, it makes you not 
I've heard the term forces you to make your own fun. Yeah. But it, it makes you have to interact with people, right. you know, in order to stay in the loop and, you know, just stay in there, you know, to be able to have fun on campus and little stuff like that, just helping out our program. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're thinking about it, you know, in the way that you just said, you know, just something helping us, just showing that we're there. Yeah. But you don't realize how many people this is also, you know, bringing in to FAM wrestling. You know, we built this culture over time, so it's just like, okay, if uh, these people who might uh, like basketball, right, these parents who might like basketball, okay, well, you know, what if the team's not doing all that well, or what if uh, their kids are freshmen, so, you know, they're kind of like having trouble, you know, being on campus, just doing whatever, it gives them a reason, it might be a little selfish, but to follow fair and wrestling, if, you know, they see, okay, our team is like all combined and we're all intertwined and you see our history you know you see our numbers so this is the culture that we have and this is the reason why if your son is, isn't even on our team isn't even a part of our program you know this yes. is why he wants to be here this right. is the so culture that could happen so yeah. there's a basketball game on saturday and we got a match on friday the parents yep. are already in town maybe they'll stop by and yeah, uh, check out the wrestling match because they've seen all the other wrestlers are at the basketball game getting yep. wild so and that's what i'm saying it's just like that you know, coming together through teams, you know, yep. but just like that bonding and those tailgates, you know, definitely help out for that. And for the guys on the team, it'll just help them make friends. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Which but, goes back into that social life. Right. Hey, bro, I saw you at the game yesterday. Good job. Like, oh, man, this kid's at our games. Yeah. Okay, yeah, oh, what's yeah. up? What are you guys doing this weekend? You know, they come out, we got a game, or we got a tailgate going mm -hmm. on. You guys stop by and um, just help build those relationships on, on the campus. Right. Outside of just the team. Because I love our bond, I just want to extend it and get more people involved too. Yeah. Um, so, Jared, <laughs> we've been kind of like going on this little rant just about the team. Um, so you, you know, obviously new to the team. What is it fully that you're expecting as far as, you know, I'm not even saying what you hope the guys would be like. What is it that you're going to instill it in them? you know, this is what I need you to be like, just being the assistant? Well, first and foremost, just be dedicated to everything you do. Give 100% effort in everything, you know, whether that's a relationship with your significant other, your, your academics, your wrestling. Like, if you give 100% into everything you're doing, you're going to be successful and you're going to find ways to succeed. And, you know, there's always those times where you're going to fail because failure is mm -hmm. part of life, but if you're going into it with the attitude of I can give 100%, and I'm going to give 100%. Good things are going to happen eventually, right. and they're going to play out. And, and you know, Logan shares the same ideology of, you know, we want guys to come here. And they want they have a good time, but they're working hard at the same time. Right. You know, and it's not it's not a culture of hey, you're going to come in here and you're going to you know play games and have all this you know Just what I call like screw around, you screw know. around, <laughs> grab ass. Yeah, you got to type of stuff. You got to take control of life. Yeah, you know, it's time to start making that jump. You know. Yeah, and this isn't high school anymore for a lot of the guys that come in and they maybe don't know what the college experience is like and I want them to come in and have a great experience I want them to, to you know leave here and feel like they actually got something out of college and not just in a wrestling sense because I know I've met a lot of people along the way where they come in and they're just wrestling 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 and they graduate they didn't build a relationship with their coach they didn't have any friends in the team they didn't maybe do good in school so now they're not getting a good job that they came to school for them. You, know, you pay a lot of money to go to college, especially oh, yeah. at the D three level. We can't give out scholarships, mm -hmm. so I want them to feel like they got something, like their money was worth it, their time was worth it, their wrestling hours in the gym were worth it. It mm -hmm. wasn't just for not. So, um, but you never see necessarily like those type of guys, even in you know D one, who goes to these schools who don't build the relationships and come back and help out or you know whatever. It's the guys who you know, really just come here for the sole purpose of, oh, I'm only here for this. I don't want to build a social life. I don't want to necessarily build with the team. I don't, yeah. you know, want to coexist with y'all necessarily. I'm here for this reason. And it makes it hard because, I mean, one, practice is already going to start wearing on you. Yeah. School's going to start wearing on you. When you are doing something, even if you're going to work every day and you hate your job, you know, Say if you just uh, struggled with all these other things aside from this job, why would you 
really want to go there and you know what I'm saying you're really going to think to yourself okay I'm going to be here for the long haul you know I'm really committed to this you're not you're not even there mentally so it's just like yeah it makes it easier when you have good connections you have yeah. friends that are getting involved and enjoy the process yeah well just like you said you know enjoying the process you have to enjoy the struggles yeah. you know the same way you have to take the struggle you know, in the same way that you do all the success, you know, you got to be humble in every single idea of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. As far as, uh, you know, the vision goes, I know a lot of assistant coaches, they kind of just come on and it's just like, all right, let me just try to ride on the coattails of what the head coach already has going on, which is why I worded it. Like, what do you specifically have that you want to you know, yeah. get out there. And there's obviously a balance. You know, I'm not here to step on his toes. He's right. the head coach. Oh, yeah. He's got the vision. He's got the plan. I'm here to make his job easier. I'm here to pick up some slack that he doesn't have time for. Gerald's a good review. Mm -hmm. There are ways to say you know, it's, 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 And it's not even about that. Like, if, if he thinks I suck, I mean, I'll tell you. That's for him to say. I'll tell you. And I'll be honest, I want that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, like if he was fake and telling me I'm doing a good job, then the end of the year comes and everyone hates me and I hate him. Yeah. You know, that's just not a good bond. It doesn't prepare you. It doesn't, you know. I and then you know that there was some type of disconnect somewhere in between that you have to come back to. Right. To actually reach the, the main problem. And if, if we have the, we have lofty goals for the program, but if I'm over here slacking or he's slacking, I'd expect him to be okay with me calling him out too. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be that, that balance of, you know, you do your thing, I do my thing, but we come together to share the same ideology. And at the end of the day, you know, he holds me accountable, I hold him accountable, which will hold the guys accountable. Right. And we want them to hold us accountable too. You know, if we're slacking or we're being jerks or we're not providing them with the resources they need, mm -hmm. we want them to come sit down and tell us because, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to be on them. And, you know, they should be on us too because we're here for them. We're right. here for the wrestlers, you know. We're here to get them through school. We're here to get them through practice. Mm -hmm. So if we're not doing the right things, I'd expect, you know, some guy to come in and say, "Hey, coach, what's going on here?" Yeah, hey, coach, you said we we're going to do this, this, and this. Like, what's, did what's you, going did on? Did you lie to me? And then, yeah. and then that leads to a problem of selling a false promise. You're set, and yeah, and that leads to guys maybe leaving, mm -hmm. or maybe future recruits not wanting to come here. And, right. and